Welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you so much for joining me today as we're going to have an empowering message around feeling spiritually exhausted and certainly raise your hand if you can relate to this energy. Yes, I can. I definitely can. And I felt a message coming through around this theme. So I'm going to share with you some of the insights I've received around why the energies have been so damn exhausting for so long. Because I remember, and you probably do too, that in previous decades, there were periods of time where we might focus on our work, right? Our internal work, our healing work, our shadow work, and then it, something would be completed and we could move on and it would feel lighter. It would feel like there was a shift, a transition. There would be a sense of, okay, I just did some work, yay me, now I'm going to move on with my life. But that hasn't been the case for at least a decade now, at least 10 years. And the energies really picked up in the year 2012 when we had the big energetic conversation between Pluto and Capricorn and Uranus in Aries. And they had a square conversation off and on for an intense period of time that cracked open what needed to be seen, healed, transformed, but also opened up new energies that came in for us to integrate and operate with. Uranus was in Aries and that was a very fast moving energy that was showing us more of who we are in terms of that airy sense of self-identity. And then the Pluto signature of transformation was very strong. And since that period of time, there has certainly been an increase in the acceleration of energies. And what I was shown is that a lot of what we're doing is much deeper work that we haven't done before, meaning there's been a lot more themes, energies, lessons that have been coming up that have been needed to be transmuted, transformed, unraveled, and removed. So we've had this ongoing deconditioning, reprogramming. It's kind of like being in a relentless car wash where just when you think you're clean, just when you think everything is looking good and shiny new, there's more to come. So we've been in this very intense cycle with bigger energies working with us collectively and individually. And it is very draining. It's exhausting. It can feel very personal at times. You can feel like you're in your own private bubble, that no one else gets it, no one else understands. They don't really know what's happening in your world. And what I've been shown is that this is for a very beautiful reason, which I'll get to in this show, meaning there is a purpose and a bigger intention behind it. And in fact, it's one of the reasons why it was so essential to be on the planet at this time, because we're working with energies that haven't been available to us previously. They weren't available to us at this level of consciousness in previous lifetimes. So there's been this opening, that cracking open of so many parts of ourselves that have been untouched, that we didn't know were there, that were maybe hiding in the shadows. But these are also parts of us that we've been able to powerfully work with, heal, and transform in a manner that we wouldn't have been able to in previous timelines. Because the energies are moving so fast, we are able to move through some of these themes faster, even though it might not feel that way when you're in it. So for example, there could be a big healing theme or a big energy that you're slogging through that takes a year. Yet in previous timelines, maybe it would have taken a full decade to work through that theme. It could have been much more intense and dense. There can be a density with these energies that also has that heaviness to it and relates to why we'd be feeling so exhausted. 
And the exhaustion can be at multiple levels of your being, where you could feel emotionally exhausted, physically exhausted, mentally Uh, You could feel it in your overall energy. Uh, You could feel it just being so worn out from doing so much work, Uh, that personal work, that internal work, really wanting to shift and change the essence of who you are. That is no small endeavor. It's a very big deal. And it's a bit like how we redirect ourselves in a way that really We know personally, even though others may have an opinion or a perception of what's happening, it's incredibly personal. And at times it can feel very lonely. It can feel like you're in a boat by yourself on the ocean with no land in sight. Uh, There are many feelings and energies that come up around this experience of being spiritually exhausted, energetically tired and worn out. And what I want to share with you is more of that long-term message and a beneficial understanding of why we've been feeling these intense energies. So one of the first areas to look at in your natal astrology chart would be your natal Pluto. Your natal Pluto that's in a particular astrological sign and in a particular house. Your natal Pluto is this energetic signature of what you have been working on in this incarnation that relates to themes in other lifetimes. So this is the deep energy signature that you may be feeling and it's something that has been relentless. And it does correlate to the energies of 2012 when not only we had that ongoing dialogue starting between Pluto and Capricorn and Uranus and Aries that went on for three years, three years that dialogue happened. But then of course in 2020, we had the conjunction between Saturn and and Pluto in Capricorn that also brought up more of these energy themes. Now, these are the general transits, and it can be more personal for you, meaning it could be that you've had your own Pluto transits that you've undergone. And in fact, I have had three intense Pluto transits since 2011, I've had Pluto square my sun, oppose my moon, and then actually it was in 2008, I had Pluto go across my ascendant in Sagittarius. So this Pluto stuff is no joke. Uh, It's a very intense transformative energy where you can feel powerless which brings up your own consciousness and it could be your own energies across multiple lifetimes where you have felt powerless in the same situations, the same energies, the same relationships, the same dynamics. But at this time on the planet, that Pluto energy is rising up and showing you what that powerlessness represents and how it can be a facade, how it's simply energy that you can transform and work through. Now, Pluto transits tend to last for about a year and a half, but it can certainly be longer. It can also be shorter, but they are the longest, most life-changing transits that we go through. And they bring up so much stuff that has been living untouched in our psyche. Things that we just didn't realize, our unconscious habits and patterns, the parts of ourselves where we've been out of touch with our own power. And that Pluto energy truly wants us to claim it. So as we move through this current energy cycle, what is unfolding is that Pluto has been revealing to us these themes across multiple lifetimes. And part of the exhaustion is how you're dealing with different energies that have different, we'll call them weights. Like some of them can feel very weighted and very heavy. They're very big themes where others maybe aren't as intense. Maybe it's a weight that you've been working through and lightening the load over many years or many decades. So it's no longer a heavy burden. 
But this Pluto energy doesn't give up. It doesn't let us go. It doesn't release us from its grasp. And we've all been in this intense undertow, uh, perhaps it feels like a riptide, where we've been required to get stronger, become stronger, become clearer uh, mentally, become more aware of ourselves. There's a deep vulnerability that Pluto brings up that again can feel powerless. It can feel like self-pity. It can feel like a victim energy that is about that powerlessness. And it's required us to take command, to take control, to step into our power. And this is also energies that play out really strongly with others, a meaning other people, uh, family, partnerships, relationships of all kinds, be it friendships, co-workers, siblings. There is an energy here where we've been forced, almost shoved into standing in a place of power that can feel scary, challenging, uncertain, because it's a very big point of growth. And you could even have a lot of your fears come up. Now, this is what's interesting about Pluto is that it will provoke us into those fears so that we can see them in the light, so we can see what is being revealed and what's being uncovered. That is how we ultimately change unconscious behaviors and patterns is that we have to see it. And so we're like shoved into this position to take a stand, to be in your power, that can feel very uncomfortable because you know at some level of your being how it's going to change things. And it's interesting because it can also bring up our deeper primal fears of rejection, abandonment, alienation, uh, a sense of are they going to respect me? Am I going to be honored? Am I going to be appreciated? Am I going to be loved when I'm in my power? Am I going to be accepted when I'm in my power? And these are the bigger energies often that we're working with that we might not know. And what happens is that when you take a stand, when you're in your power, when you are doing this deep, intense reflection, internal work, it's very intentional and you're ready to do something differently for yourself, chances are there will be the feeling of an abandonment or a rejection or not feeling accepted by those very people that you're needing or wanting that energy from. And this is how Pluto allows you to see how strong and loved you are without relying upon others. And that is one of the gifts here of Pluto and Capricorn is that you take a realistic assessment of those in your life, those in your world who truly see you and recognize you for who you are. Yet that has to happen first by yourself, within yourself, within your own energy, where you're taking a stand perhaps changing things up, doing something differently, maybe standing up for yourself, uh, maybe demonstrating what you need, how you require to be respected, how you're not going to allow certain behaviors or actions or choices in your life anymore, uh, how there's things that maybe you've been grappling with and it's been intense because it brings up our fears. And then that Pluto energy requires us to change it for ourselves first so that you recognize your power. You own what you need. You hold yourself to a higher standard and then you're seeing your own power which allows yourself to grow in your self-respect, your self-acceptance, your self-love. But this is not the fluffy, easy, simple type of self-love. This is the kind of stuff where we really come to terms with our own truth, with who we are, what we need, where we've been. Uh, there can be a lot of reflection on hindsight where you look back and it's almost like facepalm 
you know, where you're just like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I chose that. I can't believe I said that. You know, all the things that we can analyze and look at in hindsight. But the gift of hindsight is that when you're able to see something in hindsight and you look back on yourself, it also signifies you've had a change of consciousness where you can now see it from a higher level. You can see how you were operating or what you were unaware of or the dynamics you were involved in that you just didn't see at the time. This Pluto energy has a very interesting trajectory where it pulls us under into the underworld and then lifts us up to a higher level when we've done the work, when we've changed and transmuted the energies. So it is a ride and it's a personal ride. It's often very intense and emotional. And what it's showing you is where you've been. And I'm getting that image of a valley where on the left side of the valley, there are cliffs. There's this terrain that is at one level, at one altitude, and that represents where you were at a previous level of consciousness. That's where your energy resided, you lived, you thrived. Then the Pluto energy comes up, pulls us into this drop-off, which looks like a valley, but really it pulls us into the underworld, pulls us into the dark depths of our own being to have realizations, reflections, understanding, and then it lifts us up. And then you're on the other side of the valley. We'll call it the right side of the valley. And there is another cliff here, but it's higher. It has a higher altitude, which represents a higher energy, a higher perspective. And so then you can look back at the valley and the other energies that you were on, the other land, the other terrain, and you see it differently because your perspective is now higher. And this is where we then can grapple with self-judgment or a sense of why didn't I know better? Why didn't I do better? How come I didn't learn this sooner? This is where we really apply the self-love, self-compassion because it wasn't time, you weren't ready, Uh, There wasn't maybe enough energetic support. There can be this habit of beating ourselves up that like self-destructive or self-punishing or it, it can be very almost like a violent energy towards ourselves. And that's where we continue to do our own growth is to accept our humanness, to accept how we've always done the best we can and that these are very unique energies where we're accelerating through so much that there can be this sense of mental exhaustion and emotional exhaustion from all the work but also the internal dialogues that we have with ourselves that can also be draining. So part of what we can practice is the calming of our internal dialogue, the gentleness, the kindness, the sense of I'm a different person now, I'm different in who I am, and there's no going back. And that's also a strong Pluto energy signature where there is no going back to previous versions of yourself. So don't go back to beat yourself up. Don't go back to judge yourself. Don't go back to be hard on yourself or to have realis- unrealistic expectations of yourself that clearly only do more harm than good. So when we say don't go back, it means you're also holding yourself to a higher standard of self-compassion, self-acceptance, and self-love that isn't based on unrealistic perfectionism or unrealistic energies that reinforce any of the shoulds or any of the if onlys. So we're really needing to take care of ourselves in a manner that creates new self standards. And it's a bit like being in recovery and being in a place of I just went through a lot or I'm still going through a lot and it's a intense, it's emotional, it's confusing at times, and I'm going to accept myself and know that I'm so spiritually supported 
by God, Source, Spirit, the universe, by my higher self, by my soul energies, uh, by my angels and my guides. You know, those are the energies to tap into because they open up these higher streams of love, these higher streams of beauty and acceptance and peace. And that can be what we're really looking for, especially during the turmoil and the intensity, is that we're looking for that safe haven, that sense of peace in the energies that we're experiencing, whether it is the internal storms or the external turbulence. We're feeling the exhaustion, perhaps even from both directions, from both places. And what I'm feeling here that's really important to understand is the bigger picture of it all. The bigger picture of why is this lifetime so damn intense and hard? And it's true. It is a harder lifetime. And that's because you are doing very deep work, especially related to your natal Pluto, that's putting you on a brand new trajectory that your soul has never experienced before in human form. And in order to do that, we've had to undo, unravel, release, transmute, heal, you name it, and you know, I'm sure, even more of what it's meant for you. This is what we've had to basically remove in order to regenerate. There's been a regeneration here. And what they're showing me, what I've been shown by my guides, is that this is because it's a lifetime of personal leadership in a whole new way. Meaning you're stepping into a stronger sense of self, authenticity, what you want, what you need, what it means to have a life you love, what it means to live a life you love that isn't related to previous energies, previous lifetimes, or previous themes. Now, there are themes that do travel with us throughout every lifetime, and these are energies that we revisit. Uh, These are the Chiron wounds that keep coming back around. These are the Saturn energies where we're required to continually take responsibility for ourselves and do the work in a certain area of life. These are the ongoing Uranus energies where we want to be an individual, do something our own way, not be held back. These are the ongoing Neptune themes where we're continually trusting, getting our ego out of the way, surrendering to what we don't know. And these are also the ongoing Pluto energies, a very deep transformation at a soul level where we're reclaiming our power across multiple lifetimes, multiple dimensions of time, and we're looking at what that means for us right now. So there's ongoing themes, but what they're showing me is that what's so exciting about all of this work, even though it does not feel exciting at the time, is that we have the capacity to create exactly what we want in our lives where It's almost like you don't have the restraints that there were in previous lifetimes because of how different the energies are on the planet now. And we have more access to our soul's essence than ever before. And that's a huge deal. There's this huge rising up of our spiritual power, our manifestation power, our ability to really walk the talk. So there's a lot that we can say and tell ourselves, and this includes uh, mantras and affirmations and all the ways that we're mentally reprogramming ourselves. And then we have to demonstrate that. We have to be in alignment with what that appears and how that shows up in the real world. And the more that we do this, the more that these new pathways of energy open up. And that's why there's no going back because first of all, you probably wouldn't want to. Um, So I'm getting the image now of like relationships and how that can be one of the hardest parts of this is that especially if there are karmic connections to someone, like someone just feels very comfortable. It feels like this is easy. It's very uh, static status quo. It's almost like, oh, this is just something I can settle for. 
there becomes this discomfort that can't be ignored because there's something more ahead. And this is also true with the family dynamics. Uh, this is true with coworkers. Basically, anyone who touches your aura that's what they're showing me. It's an aura thing. It's an energetic thing. When you've changed so much, when you've had these very deep shifts, it affects your aura. It affects how you come across, how you feel, how you present yourself. And they're showing me the energy of bumper cars, where we have these auric bumper cars that either push people away, push them out, or they keep bumping up against us to the point where you have to decide if it's really correct for you or if it's just a safety or comfort zone response. Because what I'm seeing is that these bumper cars, they're reflecting back to us what is not integrating, you know, what isn't coming together. So there are decisions to be made. There's things that you're probably aware of in your own life about these changes and there's so many different ways that they they can be handled, meaning sometimes there's conversations that need to be had and sometimes there isn't. You know, sometimes it's just a slow drifting away. Sometimes it's just simply refocusing your attention and you refocus it in a way where it starts to feel naturally energized, where it has that effortlessness to it. And again, there can be so many ways this happens, but what they're showing me is that when you're looking at the energetics here, when you're really going into what's happening at an energetic level and you know that it's not personal, meaning you're the one who's maybe advancing and growing and you're doing that from a place of authenticity and understanding who you are and what you want. There's something here where it's not personal to anyone else and it's not trying to be personal. You're not trying to hurt someone's feelings. You're not trying to be a jerk or to be rude. It's sort of like there's this energy of I'm just following my path and wow, what a path it is. Didn't see this coming, didn't know this would be happening, but it's energizing or it's exciting and it lifts you up, which can create that further separation from others who aren't on that same path and who aren't on that same energy level. So when you can see it as energetics, that can help with stepping back from something that maybe feels personal and understanding too that everyone has choices, everyone travels with spirit, everyone has opportunities to be in their power as well. And of course, that comes down to free will, personal sovereignty, what they believe, what they want, what they choose. And this is where the separations are happening and they can happen quickly because it just doesn't mix, you know, oil and water and all that jazz. It's sort of like it just starts to feel too uncomfortable. So this has been a big theme over the past 10 years especially, but it's going to continue to show you how far you've come. At higher levels, the intensity, the exhaustion, the work, the healing, reprogramming, deconditioning, unraveling, all the layers have a very grand purpose and that is to put you in higher alignment with your own leadership energies, with your own sovereign power to create and live a life that's true for you beyond what you've previously experienced in your lifetimes. And it's a bit like there's had to been a demolition and a renovation in order for the new ground or the new foundation to be evident. And so, yes, it's been a lot. It's been hard work. It's been tiring. But it's leading to some really beautiful manifestations when you understand more of the truth of who you are. And that's also a gift of your natal Pluto is that it's reconnecting you with a deeper truth that resonates and exists at a soul level. But we've had to see how we're different, what we need to move away from, what lessons are complete, what has been required to heal 
in order to move more fully into this energy and this expression of yourself. So there is always a payoff. There's always rewards. There's always energies on the other side that reveal what we've been working on and working through. And again, it's been relentless in this lifetime. It's been a lot more, a lot more than we realized we even signed up for. But that's an important point to remember is that at a soul level, we did say yes to this because you knew you could handle it. You knew you were that strong, that brave. You knew you would be able to find the right resources, the right areas of support. Uh, You would perhaps reconnect with some tools or some higher perspectives that there would be support for these different phases of growth and these different areas of healing. So you knew that you could handle it. You knew you had the power, the strength, the ability to keep going even when it's been very tough and very deep. And this is, again, very personal. These are parts of our lives that we don't share openly. Maybe we share with one or two confidants. But even then, there's parts of our individual experiences that only we know. There's things that only you know. And that is one of the ways that you know yourself, that you understand more of who you are, maybe more of your habits, more of your patterns, more of how you move through emotional waves or where your energy feels like it's sinking down and then rising back up. This is all a part of understanding ourselves and being the masters of our own energies. And it's been essential to have this understanding and this self-awareness because as you move into more of that self-leadership energy, when you step fully into this essence of your own power, your own light, your own abilities, then you're really going into more of what is possible for you. And perhaps it's felt like it's the first time in your life or in your lifetimes that you are opening up to these possibilities. It really is that big. And it's that big because the energies have been so intense, right? Again, there is that balancing of energies where if you've been very low, very heavy, uh, there's a lot you've been experiencing, perhaps even around anxiety, depression, uh, parts of your energies that can feel stuck in patterns, uh, addictions. Uh, Maybe there's some things you haven't been able to bust through. It seems like it's this very giant energy or this, this giant wall that you have to climb. What I'm seeing is that there are solutions and ways to move through all energies and it does take time. So even for example, there could be some type of chemicals in the brain that need support, need balancing, need to be understood. And of course, there are systems within the body that may also need support, cleansing, balancing, detox, rewiring. Um, All of these are parts of the bigger rewiring, the bigger understanding of how we are changing ourselves permanently. And it's through those experiences that now we understand more of who we are, more of our energies, and what to do next. So I feel like a lot of what we're moving into is this leadership energy, this full sovereign power over your energies, the higher awareness and the higher consciousness. Now, there continues to be lessons and areas of healing that show up simply because everything in our universe is about change, transmutation, and growth. And so we will continue to have those themes in our own lives. The difference becomes how we start to move through them faster. We spot them sooner. We're able to understand, oh, 
here's my pattern. And it's like you can catch yourself and understand, oh, this is an opportunity to try something new or to do this differently, to apply what I've learned. So there's opportunities here to stay very mindful of what you've been shifting and changing and really embracing the willingness to try it differently, to see it from that higher vantage point, and to know that there are multiple ways to move through every experience. Now on my YouTube channel, on a playlist called Learning More About Your Astrology Chart, I go into some of the specific energies related to every planet. So for example, there is the episode on Mercury and balancing your mental energies. So please listen to that episode if you're looking for how to be more mentally powerful, meaning you're looking for new ways of understanding yourself, seeing problems, finding solutions, energetically balancing yourself. Uh, These individual episodes can help with pinpointing more of your own natal energies and what might be unconscious for you. And through the wisdom of astrology, we're able to make new parts of ourselves conscious, to see it differently, and to help establish new patterns that can be very empowering for our healing process. So yes, this is complicated and there's many layers to it, but the bigger picture is how we are stepping into so much more than what we've known before. And that can be scary, that uncertainty. There can be doubt. Uh, There can be the sense of, is this real? Is this even possible? Because until we've really experienced something, we have questions, we have doubts, we wonder, and our minds can go into all these places. But this is where we stay on a very clear mental track, and I'm seeing this really relating to the mind because of how that mind can be a trickster. It can really bring up so many parts of ourselves uh, that maybe we've been unconsciously looping in, and the mind will reference past experiences. The mind will bring up our fears, and ultimately the mind is trying to look for danger, threats, vulnerabilities. How can I stay safe? How can I do this correctly? I don't want to mess this up and so on and so forth. The mind wants to keep us safe. And part of what we're doing is tapping into more of our soul's power to keep us safe. The soul's energy to guide us, to give us a sense of, I can handle this. I'm ready for this. This can be the most amazing developments of my life. This can be exactly what I wished for, exactly what I've wanted to manifest. And even when I didn't always believe or I didn't always think it could happen, the soul's power comes in and gives you that burst of belief of strength, of confidence, reminds you of your power as a creator, as a manifester. So we do have to keep harnessing the mind and being aware of what comes up uh, that can throw us off or spiral us backwards. But what we're really moving into is a whole new paradigm. It's a new paradigm of ourselves first, of looking at ourselves, knowing our energy first, and then mastering it in a way where we're empowered to be ourselves in the world. So it does start with you, and that's why there's been so much going on in our personal worlds, in our own energy fields. We are reprogramming our chakras, We are reprogramming our auras. We are reprogramming our minds and our hearts, our emotional bodies. Think of all the layers of energies that are very active right now that are being elevated. They are rising up in their consciousness at an individual level and a collective level. So you have all these energy systems that are raising their frequency, raising their vibration, and it's going to pay off. It always does. That's one of the universal spiritual laws. It always will reflect back to you what you've shifted and changed, but it can take time 
in the physical world. That's because the 3D world is the heaviest and densest energies. So we make the shifts spiritually and energetically, and then it can take time for the energies to change over and show up in our physical world. But that's where we maintain faith. That's where we maintain that focus on what we truly believe. And you call on your soul's power especially when you're feeling spiritually exhausted and worn out or at any level of your being, you're feeling worn out. That's when you can envision yourself uh, being surrounded by beautiful white light, beautiful golden light, beautiful rose light, whatever calls to you. This energy can be very fortifying and very nourishing, especially when you're worn out and tired. And it's going to be like that warm, fuzzy blanket that comforts you, reminds you you're not alone, and reminds you that the energies are always in motion and always shifting. It also feels like this is the first time in our physical incarnations that we've been through such rigorous work. And it can be draining, and it's absolutely okay to take breaks, to step back, to, to just say, I need some time and to honor what your energy needs. But I feel like what happens is then we get pulled back into what is essential to work on and what's necessary, which is that natal Pluto in your astrology chart still speaking to you and bringing your attention to your power, bringing your attention to this is where you chose to transform and grow in this lifetime. That's why it's been intense here. That's why the lessons have been big, but it's a marathon and there is support for every leg of that marathon. And this is also where you might feel a rising sense of self-recognition. And that's vital. Look at how far I've come. Look at what I've been through. Look at how many times I have stepped into the work. I've stepped towards the work. Uh, One of the things that I like to say is that sometimes I just like to visualize that I have a a grenade and I'm just going to blow up the pain or I'm just going to transmute it. I'm going to blow up whatever it is because I want that energy as it blows up It transmutes into something else that is more intentional, that's more of my choosing. And it's that reminders of what you can do that will keep you empowered and on your path. So know that there are always rewards for the deep, intense work. And even if it's been delayed or pushed back or it feels like it's disappeared or what happened? I was so close. I thought this was going to transpire. I thought this was going to manifest and then it moves away or it changes. It's because the universe is actually responding to a higher vibration or a higher frequency. So it's kind of like when you realize, oh, I really want this job. This is my dream job. I'd be wonderful at it. But what you're connecting to in the moment might be a dream job that is sort of a quick fix, but it's only gonna last six months or a year. And the universe is saying, actually, let's go higher and let's bring in something that you're so passionate about and you're so wildly crazy about that it's gonna last for much, much longer. So if something is disappearing, falling away, it could have been that it would only energetically connect with you for the short term. And the universe is very wise and very aware of the trajectory of your growth. And it's saying, well, actually, we're going to bring in something that's a better long-term fit. Even if it means waiting a little bit more, there's going to be more of a payoff, more of a better connection, because now this is what's really a truer reflection of your energy, of your healing, of your growth. So those delays, those setbacks, those can feel very painful and hard. Uh, They can almost be like, please don't kick me while I'm down. And yet the universe is benevolent, loving, very wise, brings in more of what is true for you. And again, it's only through hindsight that we often see this or realize this. So I hope that brings some 
viewpoint on comfort, um, if there have been things that have fallen away, or perhaps you thought it was a sure thing and it wasn't, it's because of how the energy is changing rapidly and the universe is going to bring you in something that's a much better, truer fit. So this has been a very big theme. And stepping into a higher level of self-leadership is a big deal because it requires these changes at multiple levels of our energy systems. But again, know that it pays off. Know that it's worth it. Know that it's going to only lead you to more of exactly what you want. Now, I feel like there's more to share about this, so I will be doing a part two on this topic. I'll be doing that next Monday. So in the meantime, I hope this has supported you and brought you some higher understandings of what you may be experiencing or what you have been through. I also want to remind you that you can join my free Galactic Center online portal. I just released a new message July 9th. There's also messages from earlier, and this is where you can listen to those channeled messages for free, and they're designed to be protected uh, just for the fact that a lot is happening on the planet, and there is a necessity right now to be very aware of what is meant to be shared and how it is shared. So I invite you to check out the Galactic Center if you have not done so, and I hope that those are more messages that support what you may be going through or moving through at this time. As always, thank you so much for joining me for this podcast. I am grateful for your time, energy, and presence. You can find out more about me at mollymccord.online where you'll find my 10 published books and a number of online courses, not only about astrology and learning more about your astrology chart, but also business development courses designed for those of you who are solopreneurs, who are following your passion, really wanting to do it right. I offer programs that help you get on that path and to understand more of what's involved in this online world of entrepreneurship. So thank you so much for joining me. I'll be back every Wednesday and Monday for another podcast episode. In the meantime, I hope to connect with you on YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook. And as always, I wish you a beautiful day ahead. And I hope that you are really connecting to even more of your authentic self and more of the dreams that you're here to experience in this lifetime. Take good care and I'll see you back here soon.